given and re-elected by the voters of Massachusetts. So that um, that, but after losing in 1980, he thought seriously about running in 1984, but he didn't. Uh, his family didn't want to go through that again. And besides, he had found some real satisfaction in focusing on the Senate and not having to think about the presidency every other day. Uh, and it's in that period from 19. 81 forward that the bulk of his legislative achievements uh, were registered and that uh, that he had a t chance to become the, the, the greatest senator, I would say, of the 20th century and this little sliver of the 21st that we've lived through. Adam Clymer, um, Senator Kennedy was uh, known as the liberal lion of the Senate. I'm uh, reading from the New York Times. He led the congressional effort to impose sanctions on South Africa over apartheid, pushed for peace in Northern Ireland, won a ban on arms sales to the dictatorship in Chile, and denounced the Vietnam War. What was your experience of talking to Senator Kennedy about um, international politics and U.S. foreign policy? Well, it's interesting. That's that's the thing I learned most as I worked on the book. I really hadn't uh, hadn't had a sense of his role in foreign policy. You sketched most of the issues. Oh, uh, I think before the segment began, you broadcast one of his speeches against the war in Iraq, uh, where he was probably the most eloquent voice in the Senate in opposition. Um, he. Uh, he never thought that the benefits of democracy uh, and should be limited to those of us living under the U.S. Constitution. Um, he uh, he opposed dictatorship and tyranny. Uh, the countries you've mentioned, the uh, Pakistani control of what's now Bangladesh, and the, uh, he worried about famines abroad. Uh, he. He thought that the United States really could play a more democratic role in the world than it often seemed to. Adam Clymer, you came to know Ted Kennedy yourself, presumably, in writing this biography. What was he like personally, uh, and how open was he with you in doing this biography? Well, he was open on every subject. He wouldn't discuss Chappaquiddick with me, uh, but otherwise... Uh, we did perhaps 20 interviews. He was very helpful. He only interrupted them when a niece or a nephew called. Uh, if senators called, he didn't interrupt them for that. Um, and I found him uh, a very gracious host. Um, my wife and I went to a cocktail party in Hyannis once when I was starting in on the book. And I knew most of the people there. She hardly knew anyone Throughout the evening, he would bring people up, introduce them, and sort of explain why they would be interested in each other. Uh, in, in some respects, he had exquisite manners. So he attempted a run for the presidency, but ultimately announced that that was not his aim in life to be president. Um, his reign as a senator, 46 years, almost 50 years, um, who competes with him, Robert Byrd. Um, Robert Byrd, who wept on the Senate floor when he heard that Ted Kennedy had been diagnosed with brain cancer. Talk about how he, uh, how he navigated the Senate, um, how he pushed legislation through. Well, uh, Byrd and Strom Thurmond are the only senators who served longer than Ted. And he came to the Senate when it was a different place, when it was much more personal, staffs were smaller, there was no C-SPAN, so if you wanted to know what was going on, you had to be on the Senate floor listening. Uh, and he's used the techniques that people had then, for example, with a tiny staff, you couldn't purport to be expert on everything. Uh, so Kennedy told me he would rely on George McGovern, somebody he trusted in general, to brief him on farm, on, on farm agricultural policy. Uh, and he's used that technique of talking to other senators. Uh, he would always go to their offices if he had something to deal with. If you watched a vote on C-SPAN, Kennedy would come in with a three-by-five card with notes to talk to Senator so-and-so about this. and. And Senator Jones about that, and he'd use that time 
Uh, he came from a time when the Senate was a more personal place. Uh, and, and use those techniques better than most of his colleagues. In a few moments, we're hoping to go to President Obama, who's on Martha's Vineyard. He made a call to Mrs. Kennedy about 25 minutes after uh, Ted Kennedy died. He was woken up, of course, um, on vacation in Martha's Vineyard. And we hope to play that live. Um, Adam Clymer, what happens now? In the last weeks, um, uh, Senator Kennedy, his family, sent a letter to Deval Patrick, the governor of Massachusetts, about the succession plan in Massachusetts, about how the next senator will be chosen. Explain what's happening now and how it came to be, the rules in Massachusetts. Uh, well, uh, it always this depends on on Massachusetts politics, state politics, which is something the county has always steered, steered far away from because it's, well, it's not one of the more distinguished state legislatures in America. I don't know what the, how they will feel when they come back at Labor Day. Uh, on the face of it, the idea that the state shouldn't be lacking a senator for five months, and the current procedure allows for a special election, and it was set up for political reasons to keep Mitt Romney, the Republican governor, from appointing a successor to John Kerry. And people say it would be hypocritical uh, to change the law again now that there's a Democratic governor. Uh, I'm not sure that hypocrisy has ever bothered the Massachusetts legislature very much. But after, after his funeral and all, there'll start to be some intense jockeying for the seat and the perceptions of people and their allies as to what would suit them best uh, is, uh, is something very hard to, uh, to uh, imagine. And the significance of this, I mean, because this five months that they have for a new election at this point in the rules, this is the time of the vote on health care. Uh, well, that's, and there, while there are, were until his death, 60 Democrats in the Senate, uh, both he and Robert Byrd have been very infrequent voters. And it takes 60 votes to, sh to block a filibuster in the Senate. And so far, there's very little indication of Republican support for health care uh, legislation, so that the Democrats might have to try to to block it, uh, to block a filibuster. Uh, it's um, it, it's not clear it, it's not clear whether they'll get any Republican help or not. Adam Clymer, final thoughts on this day. Of course, it's just hours after uh, Senator Ted Kennedy has died. Do you know anything about what the plans are now for the funeral um, and uh, where the family goes from here, certainly the patriarch of the greater Kennedy clan? Uh, I don't have any information about, about that, but my final thought is that uh, Ted Kennedy affected hundreds of millions of American lives. If you vote at 18, he did, he, he's the central figure in that. If you get Meals on Wheels at the other end of life, he's the central figure there. There's civil rights, a bunch of health care measures of some great significance, probably the children's health care plan is the, is the most important. Um, we've seen Ted Kennedy grow old, as we never saw his brothers grow old. Uh, but he's probably had a more impact on America than either of them. Well, Adam Clymer, we want to thank you very much for being with us, former reporter for The New York Times. He's author of Edward M. Kennedy, a uh, biography. And we are getting reports of uh, uh, responses around the world right now. Um, uh, among those who have responded are Nelson Mandela in South Africa. We're going to go to break, and then we will return. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Again, last night, uh, early this morning, Senator Ted Ted Kennedy died at the age of 77 in his home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Stay with us. Rulers of nations as you fuss and fight Over who owns this or that and who has the right To design